fall line. Fall line. Fall line. Fall line. Fall line. Fall line. You like skiing fall line? <laughs> you might know two of my goofy buddies, Adventure Rob and James E. Boy, and uh, they hate how much I use the word fall line. But you know what? I don't give a damn. I don't care. I don't care that you broke your elbow. <laughs> I love skiing vert and I love skiing fall line so much that I really don't care what they think. The more skiing, the better, and I really mean it. And that's why I love Panorama Resort. Panorama is one of the most vertically endowed resorts I've ever skied. It's loaded with fall line. <laughs> you know what goes great with fall line? Huh. Yep, you guessed it. A little bit of liquid courage, baby. Uh, I thirty five with the top down, quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody wanna be the <sighs> <laughs> All right, let's dive into the Rise and Alpine review. Panorama is located in southeastern British Columbia in one of my favorite mountain ranges in the entire world, the Purcells. It's about a three and a half hour drive away from Calgary and about a 20 minute drive out of the town of Invermere. Um, honestly, Invermere is pretty tiny. It's tucked away kind of in the middle of nowhere and uh, it doesn't have all that much going on other than a pub with the best fried chicken I've ever had and like a pretty decent DJ set that was going on while we were just chilling and eating on a, a weeknight. The drive is always a pleasure. You can bomb in like I do from the lower mainland or if you fly into Calgary. If you're not driving in uh, like I did, flying in from Calgary and then uh, making the drive is probably your best option. If you have a car, it's great because you can kind of also hit some other mountains in close proximity. Panorama is a big walk. I'm trying not to make reference to Burger King here because I've never actually eaten a Whopper. Let me know if they're any good. I'll try one. I'm, I'm not scared of fast food. You know, I, I occasionally dabble in the delicacy of a drive through But anyways, Panorama is sizable with 3,000 acres of skiable terrain, but what really gets me fired up is the vertical drop of about 1,300 meters, making it the eighth longest vertical drop in North America. The vertical drop is legit. You can ski from the 2,450 meter highest point all the way down to 1,150 meters at the base, pretty much without stopping and guaranteed uh, to have your quads absolutely firing and, and, and hating you. And since the bottom is about 1,150 meters and it's pretty cold in Invermere, whatever's going on at the bottom is probably going on up top if there's no crazy inversion or weather systems going on, weather events going on. You know, it's pretty consistent from top to bottom. Panorama is divided into a few key zones. You've got the front side, which has some of the most world-class groomed runs I've ever seen. Then you've got the extreme dream zone, which is just steep and gnarly fall line terrain accessed by the summit chair. Then you've got the Tatum Bowl, which is hike accessed or cat accessed terrain, uh, which is seemingly unlimited tree and steep skiing. It's, it's an epic zone. And you've also got the Sun Bowl zone, which is a great spot for getting groomer turns or for the intermediate advanced skier to play around in some spaced glades. Panorama is serviced by 10 lifts, including two high-speed quads and the signature Panorama Gondola. The Panorama Gondola is awesome. I for some reason, really loved it. It's kind of like open air, goofy little gondola. It has no purpose other than getting you from the parking lot or from like your accommodation up to the base of the ski hill. Um, but it, it's, it's kind of awesome. And the boys were really stoking about it when we were going up it. A whole new world. The lift system is solid. Uh, you've got two high speed quads that take you from the bottom um, to essentially what I'd call the mid or three quarters of the mountain. And you have one kind of fixed quad share that takes you up to the summit. So when you're skiing any of the top to bottom runs, you're gonna wind up um, either taking the Champagne Express and the summit chair back up, or you're gonna go all the way to the bottom and take three chairs back up if you skied the Tatum Bowl. In a perfect scenario, you'd have a gondola going all the way from the bottom to the top, but you can't get too picky. It's already a pretty darn good mountain. Panorama's beginner footprint is honestly pretty limited. I wouldn't tell beginners to stay away altogether, but there's a lot of blue runs on Panorama and they all, you know, trend intermediate kind of steeper fall line carving style runs. So not really the best place for beginners. Um, you do have the Discovery and the Mile One chairlift, which are great kind of zones that have solid green runs um, for beginner riders to learn on. But in terms of exploring the whole resort, there's not much more greens other than cat tracks coming down from the summit or from the top of Champagne. But once you're comfortable skiing blue runs, 
you're good to go. So the vast majority of skiers who are willing to make a ski trip somewhere are probably able to ski blue runs um, or, or are just about ready to ski blue runs. So I don't want to say all beginners stay away, but there's definitely better beginner resorts out there. Um, if you look at the trail map, you'll see that you know panorama trends intermediate and trends kind of advanced. For intermediate skiers and people who love carving who aren't afraid of a bit of a hard pack, panorama is paradise. The groomers at Panorama are absolutely nutty. I've never seen so many good technical skiers in my life than I did when we were going up the Champagne Express and looking down. Like off the Champagne Express, you've just got these epic, wide, steep groomed runs that make you feel like you can just lick the Purcells as you're skiing down. It is insane for carving. And you can go from the top of Champagne and do just a huge groomer lap back down to the base and then take two high speed quads uh, back up again. It, it truly is a carving paradise. The groomers on the Champagne and Mile One Express are world class. I absolutely loved Skyline and Roller Coaster. You've got that perfect steep fall line groomer with insane mountain views. Another great spot for carving in the morning was the Sun Bowl area. It's called Sun Bowl because it gets a little more sun, especially in the morning hours. More mellow rolling type terrain with kind of some sparse trees, a really fun place to get on your edges and get some turns in as well. There's also some kind of decent transitional terrain on the Sun Bowl side for the people looking to sharpen up their skill set so they can play around on more of the advanced and expert terrain. It almost brings a tear to my eye thinking about how beautiful the groomed runs are at Panorama. <laughs> and then I remember the expert terrain is just as sick. Woo! Half of Panorama is carving terrain and the other half is expert terrain and it absolutely rocked my ski socks right off. I loved it. By just taking a quick peek at the trail map, you can see how many blacks and double black runs there are in the upper portions of the mountain. It's just freaking phenomenal. Um, the primary areas that the expert riders are gonna wanna focus on are the extreme dream zone and the Tatum Bowl zone. So uh, the extreme dream zone is honestly quite dreamy. It lives up to his name. You come off the summit chair, you take a left, and next thing you know, you just got steep lines with a mix of cliffs, pillows, bumps, trees, and then at the bottom of the, the, the top of the run, it opens up a bit to kind of a pillow field, and then you get another round of fall lines, steep going down. Like, it's just a really epic zone. We hit it with harder pack conditions, so we didn't really get to feel as much dream as you would on like a, a super deep day, but I can imagine on a pow day, you'd wanna hit the extreme dream zone hard right off the bat, boom, 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 because you're able to lap it quicker than the Tatum zone. And then once the track gets tracked out a bit, then you go into the Tatum zone. So Tatum bowl is just a huge bowl filled with so much terrain um, that you can ski and access right off the summit chair or via a hike all the way to, top, all the, way to the top of what they call the monster. So you can hike to the top of the monster. It takes about um, 20 minutes or more, depending on your you know, cardio level. Or you can take a snow cap for like 20 bucks or something, and it drives you up to the top of the monster. Um, it's called the Goldie Plateau up there. The views are really, really beautiful. But the cool part is you don't actually have to make the full hike all the time. You can just traverse across on your skis and drop into whatever line you want. Um, there are some insane lines off the whole Tatum zone um, that you have to explore. Some of my personal favorite runs were just the monster, which is the steepest kind of most alpine face off the top of the Goldie Plateau there, right? Where the snow cat stops. You've got the cliffs and you've got some of the chutes and stuff going right in to the main bowl, right in the heart of it. Some great lines in the, in the Tatum bowl, other than the monster are stash, sea spine, Donnie B's. Uh, frankly, it doesn't really matter where you decide to ski down the Tatum Bowl. Um, you're probably going to forget which run you're on anyway because it's just massive. So look for whatever looks good or looks fun and hit a couple different sections of the bowl. You know, get it from all angles. Every line down there is going to be fun and it's going to be long. Uh, the only downside to the Tatum Bowl is you have to go all the way to the bottom and it's a pretty long cat track ski once you're at the bottom of the bowl all the way back to the base of the chairlift. But on the positive side, you know, um, with great effort comes great powder snow. So like if you're hiking and you're willing to go for a long adventure lap like that, then you're probably gonna find the best snow on the mountain in that zone. Uh, and only so many people take the cat up every day. So like 
Um, if you're hiking it like I did four or five times in the day, um, you're still gonna be getting fresh lines all day long. We had pretty hard packed conditions, which isn't uncommon for Panorama, but I can only imagine how ridiculous it is when the pow snow falls. Um, you probably could spend the first day of a pow day just skiing the front side stuff, and then you could, you know, day two, even if more snow didn't fall, the Tatum Bowl would still just be full with pow, maybe three, four days after a storm. So Panorama would truly be paradise on this expert terrain on a pow day. Pretty much every single zone on Panorama has awesome tree skiing. If you want some steeper trees, check out the Extreme Dream Zone or mess around in the Tatum Bowl. If you want something a little more mellow, um, there's some really fun trees just right off the summit chair, super lappable. So just ski underneath the summit chair and there's great space glades. The bumps get pretty big in there, but if you have a pow dumping, um, it's gonna be really fun. I also had a lot of fun just ripping the bumps. It's that kind of pitch that you can just kind of keep bump skiing and never have to slow down. Great flow. Um, if you want trees that are even more approachable, check out the Sun Bowl with some of their space glades and the intermediate runs. Pretty fun. There's just so much good tree skiing to be done at Panorama. So go for a little adventure, play around in the trees within the bounds of the resort and you're, you're surely going to find some good pockets of pow uh, to, to play around in. Tree skiing is really fun at Pano. Although Panorama caters well to the carver and the advanced expert kind of big mountain uh, skier, there's still a terrain park there and it's still solid. It's under the mile one quad so you can check out all the features as you ride up the lift, enjoy them on the way down. We didn't even spend a single minute in the park, what's new, but there is a park if you're interested uh, in riding park when you visit Pano. One of the best things about the Powder Highway Resorts, especially Panorama, is the lack of lift lines, it just isn't really that busy there, especially on chairs like the Summit Chair. Um, a lot of the skiers I found at Panorama were like ski racers or involved in the ski racing, so they're hanging out a lot on the Mile One and the Champagne Express. So if you're playing around in the higher runs, you're gonna kinda have them all to yourself. So Panorama is a, is a fairly quiet resort and I wouldn't expect any mega lift lines unless for whatever reason you're there on like the deepest day of the entire season. Uh, but the flow is, is, is great and it's, it's relaxing to not have to stand in the lift line. Like your legs are going to be done before the day is finished. That's the reality. And that's when you know you're having a good time at a mountain. Panorama snow conditions can be hit or miss and its MO is, is ice, you know, carving, hard pack type skiing. They only get about 500 centimeters or 200 inches of snow per season on average, which isn't really that much. But if you are a lucky one and line up one of those big pow dumps, man oh man, are you going to have an exceptional time. And with the cold temperatures, you're gonna have days and days of good skiing and the groomers are gonna stay good for a long time because the temperatures stay cold. I haven't looked at a guidebook uh, about the area or haven't talked to any locals about the backcountry access, but from the Goldie Plateau, just walking up the monster hike, I could see some insane backcountry lines. There's the ridge, and a peak to the right that just had these sick lines coming down. And there's even Mount Goldie, which looks super skiable. So just from the blind eye, um, I could see a ton of slack country opportunity out there. Just make sure if you're thinking about popping off the resort to do some sick slack country skiing, make sure you're dialed with the avalanche forecast and bulletin. Have your avalanche gear and training and potentially get out there with the guide so you can have as much expertise to be as safe as possible. Because the rocky snowpack it's volatile. I think Panorama is a great family resort. It's not overwhelmingly big, but there's tons of different runs and exploration for, for you to do as a family with varying skill levels. I would say if you have kids who are like total green skiers, there's better places. But once you're, you know, your kiddos are dialed on blue terrain, it's going to be a blast for them. And kids don't even notice whether they're skiing POW or whether they're, you know, riding on sheets of ice. <laughs> it really doesn't matter to them. They're going to have such a fun time at Panorama. Um, it's definitely a solid spot to, uh, to take your family, especially when the kids are a bit more experienced. Panorama is part of the Icon Pass and uh, the Mountain Collective Pass membership programs. So if you have one of those passes, you can just use them uh, to ski at Panorama. And uh, if you wanna have a discounted ticket, usually the multi-day tickets are, uh, are a touch cheaper. Um, you'll also find lots of pretty sweet accommodation on the resort. So if you're gonna go up there and you're gonna stay there, I definitely recommend staying in the resort area, ski and ski out if possible, instead of um, you know staying down in uh, 
down in uh, in the town and having to, to drive up from Invermere every morning. Um, so it's a great spot to kind of stay on mountain and just get away. Panorama has absolutely everything I look for in a ski hill and more. It is just good fall line skiing, steep, fast terrain, whether you're carving or skiing the expert runs. You couldn't really ask for anything more from a terrain perspective. Um, if they had more snow, that would be awesome, but you know, it's best to go there with some sharp edges and be ready to carve for a few days. And if you link a pow day, you're gonna have the best days of your entire life. But if it stays cold, all of the uh, expert runs are gonna be super fun to still explore and shred down. Overall, the vibe was really good. We hung out on a sunny day in the summit uh, area. There's like a nice little hut up there. there they had delicious food, like crazy local meats. I think we had a really good bratwurst, gassed a couple beers up there. <laughs> Just like a great time um, at Panorama. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, vibe, vibe's good. Pass the vibe check. The only other thing I'd say lift-wise is that it would be sweet to have some sort of expansion with like a lift going into the Tatum Bowl at some point, but Locals might hate that because then you'd get less fresh lines because it'd be more accessible for everyone. But I guess the one thing they could do is put a high-speed quad in to go up the summit chair. Or what would be really sweet is a gondola going from the base right to the summit, right? So you just don't waste all the time kind of riding chair, chair, chair in the cold to get so high up. It's a chilly ride going up all those chairlifts. Now, all in all, you know, the, uh, the positives of Panorama wildly outweigh any of the negatives. And I'd say without a doubt, it's definitely a mountain you need to check out. It's a great stop if you're doing a powder highway trip, but also an awesome stay if you wanna stay for a few days, plan a trip, get away, ski and ski out, shred, have a hot tub at night, couple wobblies, and then get back out there and ski again the next day. It's a fun time and it's got great terrain. So if you like fall line skiing as much as I do, Panorama is a place you need to check out. Let me know in the comments what you think about Panorama Ski Resort. Let me know if you've tried it before. Let me know if you have any questions. It's been a lot of fun seeing the comments go off with these reviews, so uh, keep them coming, baby. Uh, snow's just about falling, kind of. I'm being really optimistic, but <laughs> snow's coming. We're almost there, and that's gonna be one hell of a season. So stay stoked, stay spicy, and I'll see you in the next one. Sayonara, folks.